So you're considering making the move to the great state of Utah, and you're really curious, where are the best places to live in Utah? In this video, I'm going to answer that question specifically, but I'm also going to tell you what the worst thing is about each of these top 10 in this list. And what I've done is I've scoured the internet. I've researched everything that I could find in terms of the lists as the best places to live in the state of Utah. And I've compiled a list based on all of that data and research that I've done. So hopefully this serves you and helps you make an informed decision and make sure that it gets you on the right track. Now, right here on my YouTube channel, I get a lot of feedback in the comments and I love seeing those comments and I love having those conversations. So I'd love to hear your opinion as I go throughout this list to let me know if your opinion differs from what I'm sharing in this list but also as I share the one most negative thing about each one of these cities, I would love to hear your feedback in terms of, have you been here? Have you visited here? Or perhaps you already live in Utah and you have something to add to the conversation as well, because positive or negative, pros or cons, everything feeds into a good conversation, which helps you make the very best decision to make sure that you're landing in the right place for you. And before we get started, my name is Scott Steele, and I love helping people discover all things Utah, including Utah real estate. If you have any questions, hit me up. But with that said, let's get started right into the video. So number one on the list, I wanna start with the big one, and that is Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City has so much to offer. The culture in Salt Lake City is quite different than pretty much anywhere else in the state. So depending on what you're looking for, if you're moving to the city, if you're moving to Utah, you might find that the city itself has some better vibes for you, or perhaps it has a better proximity to the canyons or the city itself for events or other things that are happening. Whatever the case may be, Salt Lake City is an incredible choice if you're choosing to live in Salt Lake City. Now, within the city, there are so many cool neighborhoods from Yale Crest to Federal Heights to the Avenues or Liberty Wells or Sugar House. There are so many cool areas just outside of the city as well, just south of the city. We have Mill Creek, we have Holiday, we have Conwood Heights. There's so many areas within the city of Salt Lake City and just outside of the city that make this an amazing place to live. Now, I have not lived in Salt Lake City proper for a long time. I live in the outskirts or the suburbs of Salt Lake City. I personally live in South Jordan, but I love the city because I love the energy, the vibes that are happening. I love to go for restaurants. I love to go for events. So if I'm going to go see a jazz game or perhaps a hockey game this year, now that we have a professional hockey team, whatever the case may be, I love going to the city, make a great date night for my wife and I. But regardless, it's a really cool place to go and be in the mix of all the things that are happening in the city. And the city, believe it or not, has a really rich culture. There's a vivid art scene. There's so many cool things to go see and so many things to do, including venues that perhaps might not jump out to you if you're doing a Google search. And that's why here in my YouTube channel, I love sharing these things because I love showing people exactly what to expect when moving to any part of Utah, but especially in Salt Lake City. And something else that really sticks out in terms of why is Salt Lake City great? Well, there's a reason why, and that reason is reflected in the growth that Salt Lake City has seen. In just a few short years, the number of residential units in Salt Lake City has more than doubled. That happens for a reason, guys. That happens because it is a great place to live. That happens because people are really looking to make that move into Salt Lake City and be right in the heart in the mix of all the action. Now, with that said, Salt Lake City is not a big metropolis. It is not a massive city, perhaps like LA or Chicago or Dallas or Houston whatever you want to compare it to, it's definitely not one of those cities, but it has a pretty good food scene. It's not on the level that maybe Las Vegas or Orlando or New York City might be, but it is up and coming. It has drastically improved over the last half decade or more. And the number one thing that's been voted on as the least attractive part about Salt Lake City is the nightlife. So yeah, if you're looking for nightlife, Utah and Salt Lake City specifically are just not your thing. That's not why people choose to make Salt Lake City their home. But with that said, I think there's plenty of positives to outweigh that and honestly the proximity to the outdoors and all the things that the city provides are absolutely stunning and amazing and i think it offsets that negative okay moving on number two on the list and that is park city most people when they think of park city utah they think of the winter olympics they think of the skiing and the snowboarding the world-class ski resorts and the tourists that make their way into this beautiful town and city in Salt Lake City and up into Park City to make sure that they experience everything that Utah has to offer. Park City is the mecca of tourism in the state of Utah, and rightfully so. 
There's so many things happening up and around Park City, not just in the city itself, but the other little small towns around it. There are a lot of attractions, but the number one driving force of all things Park City is the outdoors. And it's not just in the wintertime, it's the summertime and every season in between. From world-class mountain biking, to snowmobiling, to fishing, to boating, to all things winter sports, it's the mecca of everything when it comes to access to the city in Salt Lake City being just a quick short drive away, but also having access to the beautiful outdoors. So this is precisely why Park City has become known as the most expensive place to live in Utah in general, because the home prices in Park City have almost reached an average price of $2 million. And why is that? Well, so many people move here or choose to purchase a second home in Park City. And so vacation homes and second homes are very prevalent in the town of Park City, but also the surrounding areas. And the areas that are just outside of the city limits of Park City are growing just as much. And that does not look like it's slowing down anytime soon. Multi-million dollar properties are being built each and every single day, and they sell consistently. So if you're moving here, or perhaps you're looking for a second home or vacation home here, reach out to me. I would love to be your real estate resource of choice. And I love helping people in the Park City market as well. It's a really fun place to look for a second home if that is something that your lifestyle and your budget affords because you have to be prepared. Real estate prices in Park City are quite high, but that does not seem to slow people down because it continues to grow and it grows for a specific reason. Another really major attraction in Park City is the Sundance Film Festival. Now, hopefully the Sundance Film Festival continues to thrive right in the town of Park City. I hope that it doesn't go somewhere else. But with that said, a lot of people make their way here to Utah and are introduced to Utah through the Sundance Film Festival and Park City. So that's pretty cool to me. So we've talked about the luxurious lifestyle. We've talked about the incredible outdoors. So what is the number one negative of Park City? I would say absolutely 100% is the cost. The cost has gotten so expensive, not only to live there, but to ski there to do the activities it's gotten a little expensive and for locals like me it's like why would i go to park city and spend so much more money when i could maybe hit a different resort maybe in the cottonwood canyons or up in snow basin or powder mountain and spend less but regardless the high prices are obviously part of the equation in terms of supply and demand and the people that are there can afford to do it and so i understand the economics behind them all right so moving on on the list number three on the list this surprised me a little bit and that's provo provo is a larger town or small city down in utah county it is the largest city in utah county and it is home of brigham young university and so when i think of provo it is certainly a college town but it is very influenced by the family friendly environment and the culture that surrounds not only provo but the adjoining city of Orem as well. So the Provo Orem metropolitan area, the closer you get to Provo, the more that that vibe kicks in in terms of a college town and a family friendly town, it is growing just like the rest of Utah. And Provo is the largest city within the fastest growing county of the state of Utah, which is Utah County. Provo and the Provo metropolitan area is growing faster than any metropolitan area in the state of Utah. And pretty soon it's going to pass up 1 million people in terms of population. And I think that eventually it could, because of geography, surpass that of Salt Lake County or the Salt Lake City metropolitan area. Now that's not to say that Provo itself will become a bigger city than Salt Lake City. I'm speaking of the entire metropolitan area, which consists of the entire county of Utah County. So Provo excels dramatically in a number of different ways. And that is education, the economy, the natural beauty with the Wasatch Mountains right there in your backyard. But what is the most negative thing about Provo, you ask? Well, if we scour the internet, it's just not for everybody. It might be just a little too close in terms of a family-friendly environment for some people that want a little bit more action. They want a little bit more city life, more restaurants, more life, more activities, whatever the case may be, you might find that Provo might be boring for some people. Now, for me, I don't really make my way into Provo all that often. I prefer to go to Salt Lake City instead because Salt Lake City is only 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes away from my home and Provo is a little bit further than that. So I'd rather go to Salt Lake City because Salt Lake City has everything that I'm looking for, but I can understand why some people might find that Provo is boring. All right, moving down to number four on the list, that is St. George. St. George sits in the southwest corner of the state of Utah on the very edge of the state, and that part of the state is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. It is home to our most popular of five national parks in Zion National Park, which is the most visited national park in the state and one of the 
the top visited national parks in the entire nation. And the lifestyle in St. George is completely different. The landscape is different. The climate itself gets really mild winters and really hot summers. So if you don't like that really scorching heat in the middle of the summertime, it does not get as bad as Phoenix, for example, but it's pretty close to what you would experience in Las Vegas. So if that's too hot for you, St. George might not be the spot, but if you enjoy year-round activities without snow, being able to wear short sleeves and shorts all year long and golf all winter long, St. George might be the best place for you. Now, I've grown up in Utah and lived in Utah my entire life, and St. George for so long was just a place where the snowbirds went. It's where people went to retire because they wanted to live a different lifestyle, but St. George has far surpassed what it once known for and is now a hub for everything, including the economy, including jobs, all sorts of things happening in and around St. George. Another really strong point that makes St. George an amazing place is the outdoor activities. The endless possibilities that you experience in and around St. George, it is breathtaking, it is awesome. The lifestyle that you'll experience in St. George if you choose to partake in the outdoors is honestly second to none. And there's a ski resort in Brinehead that's not too far away. You can make that drive in less than two hours easily, probably closer to an hour and a half. And that rounds out all of the different activities that you can experience in Southern Utah, not only with national parks with Bryce Canyon and Zion National Park, but all of the off-road trails and everything from Snow Canyon or San Hollow State Parks. There's so many cool things to experience around St. George. And like I said before, it's a really popular place for retirees, but it's also a really poppin' place for younger people and young professionals as well. It's a very family-friendly environment. So what is the most negative thing about St. George, you ask? Now, I can personally inject my opinion here. I stayed in St. George, as I do oftentimes, but just a couple of months ago, I was in St. George for several days staying there and what I experienced is as being the number one most negative thing about St. George is its massive growth. The geography of St. George and the landscape does not allow for a really great transportation system. It's kind of shaped somewhat like a triangle. There are some roads that kind of create a triangular geography to the town itself but then it branches off into so many different directions and so it can take quite a bit of time from to drive from one part of the town to another but also what I noticed is the restaurants on a Thursday night were packed. Everything was packed on a Thursday evening. And so I think that growth is really playing into it. I do believe that all of the other things will come and grow along with the city of St. George and the surrounding areas. So long term, I think that's not going to be as big of a problem, but hopefully they figure out the transportation thing to accommodate the massive growth that it's experiencing. All right, next up on the list, this one might throw a lot of locals off and that is Ogden, Utah. A lot of locals might think of Ogden as a much less desirable place to live, but in fact, Ogden is a wonderful place and there's so many things happening and the revitalization of the downtown Ogden area as well as the surrounding areas and the growth that's happening to the north and to the west of Ogden is pretty amazing and if you have not made that drive through those suburban areas you would be shocked as to how beautiful and how nice it truly is so don't scratch Ogden off the list there's so much that Ogden offers and of course just like most cities on this list the outdoors are right there in your backyard there's so many opportunities for the outdoors but another really big positive for Ogden and the metropolitan an area as a whole is the real estate is a little less expensive. So your money goes further. If you're looking to make a purchase for a new home, for example, your money is definitely going to get you more in towns like Syracuse or West Haven, West Point, Ogden, whatever the case may be, than it would down in Sully County or even in Utah County. Another really big positive that I see in Ogden is the revitalization of not only the downtown area, but the surrounding areas. It is changing drastically from when I was a kid. I think it will continue to make that growth and that change, and it is home to Weber State University, which gives it a little bit of a college town vibe, which I kind of like, but it has a great mix of other things as well. And as I scour the internet to look for what is the most negative thing about living in Ogden, this is the top thing that popped up, and that is proximity and access to Salt Lake City. Now, Ogden, it really isn't that far from Salt Lake City, neither is Provo. They're pretty close to about the same distance away from Salt Lake City, but the traffic coming from Ogden sometimes can bottleneck down into Davis County, where the freeway and the other highways that come down from the north into to Salt Lake County, those areas can get fairly congested and bottleneck the traffic in such a way that it does feel like it's a little more painful to get into the city. So I don't know, tell me your experience. If you happen to live in Davis or Weber County, specifically Weber County, I would love to hear your experience if you're trying to make that commute. What is it like for you? All right, next up on the list, number six is Draper, Utah. Draper sits in the southeast corner of the Salt Lake Valley and is a phenomenally beautiful place to live. It's 
tucked right up against Corner Canyon, and along with that comes a lot of homes that are sitting up on the bench, as well as up at the top of that mountain, which is called Suncrest, and is technically part of Draper as well. So the views from up there on Suncrest, on top of that mountain, looking over Salt Lake County, are phenomenal, including the sunsets. The views are unbelievable, but the city is a little too far away to really get a great city view, unless it's nighttime and the lights are on. And I would probably say that the views, if you live on the benches, the foothills, or on top of Suncrest above Draper, would probably rival any views in the valley, other than perhaps the upper avenues in Salt Lake City. I think those views are even better because the city is right below you. But Draper offers a lot of different things as well. And some of the greatest things that are happening for Draper are, it's a safe place to live. It's a really family-friendly suburban environment. But the tech scene in Lehigh to the south in Utah County is bleeding over into Draper. And it's really prevalent and you'll see that along I-15 that runs right through Draper. And the other thing that's really interesting to me is on the west side of I-15 that cuts through Draper, there's another section of Draper that used to be home to the Utah State Prison. Now that Utah State Prison has recently been demolished and has been rebuilt a new prison up in Salt Lake City closer to the airport. But that massive amount of land that once was the Utah State Prison is now home to one of the big biggest developments the state has ever seen, which is called The Point. Now, I created a video several months back about The Point development. You can see that right here on my channel, but that development was just announced and it's just in its early stages. It's really going to be exciting to see how that adds to everything that's happening in Draper. And it's certainly going to help add more jobs, especially tech jobs, because that is the focus along that corridor. Okay, so the number one thing that I found negative about living in Draper, Utah, out of everything that I could find is it's expensive. That's what it boiled down to. Now, Park City is the most expensive place in the state, but Draper is a little pricey. So if you want to live in Draper, it's probably going to cost you a little bit more for the same home than what you would maybe perhaps find just north of Draper in Sandy or just west of Draper in Riverton, for example. Regardless, Draper is a little pricey and has that reputation of being just a little more expensive as well. And so that might be considered a negative for you as well. All right, moving on to number seven on the list is Logan. Logan sits way up to the north. It's quite a drive from Salt Lake City. It's a couple hours north. Logan is one of five metropolitan areas in Utah. Now, the three major metropolitan areas sit along the Wasatch Front, connect to each other down here near Salt Lake City. And while St. George is another metropolitan area in the south, Logan is the other and the fifth metropolitan area to the north. Now, the things that really stick out to me when I go through Logan, and I go through Logan frequently, is as soon as you enter the Cache Valley, it is just a different lifestyle altogether. There's a lot of farmland. It's green. It's a beautiful place to live and a beautiful place to call home. It is less expensive than living on the Wasatch Front and a highly desirable place to live. It has a very really strong culture in terms of the roots of the people that actually live there. But it's also a college town. It's home of Utah State University, the Aggies, and it's a really cool place. It has a really cool vibe. And so I think that Logan is a really attractive place to live. And I would add that in addition to education and the cost of living, which is beneficial in Logan, the other major factor that makes Logan a phenomenal place to live is the outdoors. Right in your backyard, in every direction, there's something cool to discover. Bear Lake is just a quick drive away. You can experience so many things if you live in Logan. So Logan is really high up on my list. So what is it about Logan that is my biggest negative or perhaps the biggest negative that other people are pointing out online and what is something that might prevent you from wanting to live in Logan? And besides the fact that it's farther away from the city in Salt Lake City, I think that might be a positive for many people. So I'm not going to talk about that here, but I will say that the number one least attractive thing about Logan is it's just a little colder. On average in the wintertime, it's about 10 degrees colder than it is along the Wasatch Front. And so if you're really trying to stay out of that really cold climate, Cache Valley might not be the place for you. Some of the places in and around Cache Valley tend to be some of the coldest towns in Utah during those cold weeks during the winter time. So in essence, I kind of consider Logan the exact opposite of St. George. You've got the coldest place in the state with decent amount of population, and then you have the hottest place in the state in St. George. So it's kind of polar opposites in that regard. All right, moving on in the list to number eight, it is Sandy, Utah. Now, just last week, I did a video in Sandy exploring what $750,000 buys you in Sandy, Utah. So if you're curious what kind of home you can buy in Sandy for that price point, check out that video right here on my channel. But why does Sandy stand out as one of the best places? Sandy is a larger city. It takes up a larger geographic area within the Salt Lake Valley. And I feel like the number one reason why people choose to live in Sandy is its access to the canyons in Big Cottonwood Canyon and Little Cottonwood Canyon and all of the recreational activities that come with that with world-class skiing and the very best resorts in terms of the most difficult terrain 
with the most snow that most ski resorts get in all of North America in Alta, Snowbird, Brighton, and Solitude. Sandy is really the heart of where you can enter into the Wasatch Mountains on the south end of the Salt Lake Valley, and that is a major draw. So in addition to recreation, Sandy is a great family-friendly area. It is full of a lot of suburban area with its center of focus in terms of business closer to the I-15 corridor. And I think that separation plays really well into what it feels like living in the suburbs of Sandy. I think it's really nice. I think it's a great lifestyle. And that leads me into the next point, and that is the business district, the areas in Sandy that really attract people from other cities and surrounding cities throughout the state. And that is a couple of venues that I think are really cool that Sandy has that most cities don't, and that is the Hell Center Theater, number one, and number two, America First Field, home of our major league soccer team, Real Salt Lake. Those two venues alone bring a lot of people into Sandy to spend their money, enjoy the events, and then go home. I think Sandy's a great place to live, but there's one thing that sticks out as the most negative, and here it is. Most of the homes built throughout Sandy, not all, mind you, if you live here in Utah, you'll know a lot of those suburban areas are older neighborhoods with homes that were built in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and those homes are needing a little bit of revitalization and I'm noticing that to a great degree as I see homes being renovated and I see that trend of renovating a lot of homes moving south from just Salt Lake City down from Mill Creek and Holiday, Conwood Heights all the way down into Sandy. I see a lot of revitalization coming up in the town of Sandy but if you're looking for a new home, a brand new home, Sandy's going to be a tougher place to find that. There are little pockets where you'll see some infill that's being developed or perhaps an area that's been scraped, demoed, whatever the case may be. The new construction is pretty slow slim in Sandy's and most of the homes are a little older and you might have to get some work done to make sure that house is up to your standards. All right, moving on to number nine on the list, that is Lehigh. Lehigh sits just south of Salt Lake County, just south of Draper, in fact, on the other side of that county line and they're on the very northern tip of Utah County. And so within 30 minutes of Lehigh, you can be in downtown Salt Lake City. It has great access for the city, but other things that really come into play in terms of the big things happening in Lehigh, it is the tech hub of the state of Utah. It has been dubbed as Silicon Slopes. So when you think of Silicon Slopes, you think Lehigh. It is home to the headquarters of numerous tech companies, including Adobe and many others. But this particular place in the state of Utah has seen an incredible amount of growth, especially in business, but especially in the tech industry. And along with that has come massive growth. Lehigh has been an incredibly fast growing city and is currently one of the top 10 fastest growing towns in the state of Utah. And I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. And my favorite things about Lehigh are it is very family friendly, but it also offers great proximity and access not only to Salt Lake City, but the highway systems that are running north-south through Salt Lake County are making access to the Salt Lake International Airport just that much better, accessible along Bangor Highway or the Mountain View Corridor or I-15. And with recent announcements of expanding that freeway system from the Mountain View Corridor down into Utah County, it will provide a lot of relief on north-south traffic going in and out of Utah County into Salt Lake County. And so I just see Lehigh as being the center of all of that, and it is a phenomenal location. I can't actually find a lot of negative things about Lehigh, and as I scoured other people's opinions, I could not find a really big negative for Lehigh, other than some people were complaining about traffic during rush hour when people are leaving their job or whatnot, but I don't see that being too much different than most places. I will add my personal experience to this with neighboring Saratoga Springs and Eagle Mountain just to the west of Lehigh growing incredibly fast. It has created a little bit of a bottleneck in Lehigh in terms of traffic, but I do see that this upcoming transportation project in expanding the freeway system, it will absolutely help alleviate the traffic not only in Saratoga Springs and Eagle Mountain, but the access to get there through Lehigh. So I think this is a short-term problem, but I guess say that is the worst part about living in Lehigh. But other than that, I really honestly can't think of anything negative about living there. All right, last up on the list, number 10. Many people would think that I'm going to put South Jordan here, but I'm not. I'm not going to do that this time. I absolutely love living in South Jordan, and I'm going to do a video in a couple of weeks that's just specific to South Jordan, but I'm going to leave that off the list, and instead, I'm going to add the town of Moab. Moab is the playground of Utah. It is in the southeast quadrant of the state of Utah, and it is the gateway to two national parks in Canyonlands National Park, as well as Arches National National Park. Moab is a small town, so if you're looking for a city, that is not the right place for you. But the experience of living in and playing in the outdoors in Moab is absolutely amazing. The Colorado River runs right next to this town. You have Slick Rock with mountain bike trails, Jeep trails, UTV trails. You can experience such a diverse amount of activities and recreation in Moab. It is by far 
Utah's playground. I can't imagine living there personally because it's just such a cool place to go to play. It's a little too small of a town for me, but the tourism in Moab is strong. So if that's something that is relevant to you and your business, perhaps, tourism in Moab is huge. It's a great place for Airbnbs and other things like that, but it really boils down to the outdoor activities, the lifestyle, and of course, the community itself. So what is the most negative thing about Moab? Well, I would just say, it's a very small town. So if that's not what you're looking for, Moab might not be the place for you. But other than that, Moab is a cool little town to go visit. So even if you don't live there, it's definitely a place worth visiting and going to periodically to experience what Utah has to offer. Now, each of these 10 places that I've shared has unique, distinct opportunities and different pros and cons. I would love to hear in the comments below what your thoughts are of my list that I've created here. And did I miss something? Or perhaps you're curious about one of these places that you want me to create more video content around Around, I would love for you to drop that comment down below. And as always, I would love to be your real estate resource of choice. If you are looking to make the move to Utah, or perhaps you already live here and you're looking to make a move, I'm here to act as your guide. Please reach out to me. You can find my information in the description below or in the pinned comment on this and every video. And until next time, thanks.